Today I'm going to show you how to work all six of the capital budgeting methods in Chapter 6, and we're going to use information from Problem 1 in Chapter 6. This is a $300,000 project, a 9% required return, and the cash flows are $98,000, $89,000, So let's get started by working the net present value. To do this, I need a present value interest factors for each of these cash flows and a present value column where I'm going to do the present value calculation. Put a line under those cells just to make it look a little better. Our present value interest factors are already calculated over here, but it's using H1 as my exponent. Click the formula there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and uh, paste it here. So right click and copy this cell, paste here, and open up the formula again. For the exponent, I don't want to use 96, obviously. I want to use 1, 2, 3, and 4, the year indicator. And to switch that out, I just highlight the dollar each dollar one, which is an absolute reference to this cell. And I just click on whatever cell I want to use, in this case 1, to raise to the first power. Hit a return, and here's my present value interest factor. If you go down to the lower right, you can grab this and fill on down the line here. And our other factors will be calculated for us. And then the present values can be calculated by taking each cash flow times its present value interest factor. Hit a return. Again, you can use the fill command. And auto sum at the bottom. Add those up. And this is the present value of cash inflows. We can calculate the net present value by coming to this cell and say equals the present value of inflows minus the present value of outflows. And our net present value is $49.77. Once we get here, it's easy to calculate the profitability index. Instead of taking the present value of inflows minus the present value of outflows, I'm going to divide. So the profitability index is equal to the present value of inflows divided by the present value of outflows, and we get the profitability index, which is just over 1.0. I can use these same present value of cash flows to calculate the discounted payback period. I need another column out here that accumulates those cash flows. I'm going to call this the cumulative present value of cash flows. And underline that, make it look a little better. This one starts out with our project cost, 300000 and right off the bat, if we've invested $300,000, we're in the hole, $300,000. So I'm going to say this cumulative cash flow is equal to the negative of that. So just to indicate that I'm in the hole, $300,000. But in the first year, I get back a present value of $89,908.26. So if I add that, then I'm still in the hole, but now only by $210,091.74. Once I get to the second cell, I can just take the previous calculation and add the next year's cash flow, present value of cash flow, and keep on doing that all the way down. We find out that this project is paying back between year three and four, almost to year four. And I can calculate the discounted payback over here. A discounted payback is equal to the last year with the negative present value of cash flows, which is year three. So 3 plus, and then there's a fraction. I want uh, another 58,041.09 out of 58,090. So I'm just going to, this needs to be a positive number. So I'll just put a negative sign in front of the cell and divide that by the 58,090.87. Close my parentheses, hit a return. That's not dollars. This should be just a general number. So. I'll go up and reformat for general numbers. And we find out that the discounted payback is almost to year four, 3.999 years. So far, I've calculated the net present value, profitability index, and discounted payback. I can also use this setup to calculate the internal rate of return. The internal rate of return is the rate that would give me a zero net present value. I want the net present value to go down to zero. And the way you make a present value go down is by increasing the rate. Uh, question is by how much. If I take this up to 10%, for example, that's way too much. We get a negative 6,216.79 for net present value. So uh, I'm going to change this back to 0.09, our original cost of capital. 
And we'll use the Goal Seek feature in Excel to solve this. Go to your Data tab to What If Analysis and Goal Seek brings up your Goal Seek dialog box. And we want to set this cell, the net present value, equal to zero. Just type that in by changing the rate. And if I click OK, that Excel will change this rate until the net present value becomes zero. And we find out that a zero NPV results when we plug in a rate of 0.090078. So the uh, internal rate of return on this project is 9.0078%. I can click OK to keep that. But I actually want this cell to be 0.09 because I'm going to be using that in calculating the modified internal rate of return. So I'm going to change this back to 0.09 and I'm back to my original numbers. And that's how you solve for the internal rate of return. And that leaves us two methods in Chapter 6 yet to go. The first is the modified internal rate of return. And to work that, I'm just going to copy this basic information and paste it down here because it's a little different method than what we're doing here. first step in the modified internal rate of return is to calculate uh, future value interest factors and the future values of all these cash flows. I'll underline these cells again just to make it look a little better. And then the future value interest factor is up here calculated for us again. I'm just going to copy that and paste down here. Double click it to bring up the formula. And the thing about the future values is this project ends in year four. The year four cash flow, 82,000, is already in value. So if I wanted to use this formula to keep that 82,000, I would want the interest factor to be equal to one, and then the future value would still be 82,000. I want this exponent to be zero. This $89,000 payment is one year prior to that. This $99,000 payment is two years prior to that. So I'm gonna put some reference numbers over here on the left starting with zero, and then one year away, two years away, and three years away, respectively, uh, because this $89,000 is one year away from year four. This $99,000 is two years away from year four, and the year one cash flow is three years away. So the exponent for this, I'm going to change from dollar each dollar one to my reference numbers that I just put in. And if I set this up correctly, I should be able to fill the rest of these. And if I've done it right, this last one will be 1.0. And it is. Then to calculate the future values, we just say each of the cash flows times their future value interest factor. And you can fill the rest of these. You can fill up as well as down. So here are all the future values. Use my auto sum to figure out the total future value. I'm going to label this future value of cash inflows, FVI. And then I can use that to calculate the MIRR, modified internal rate of return, which I'll do in this cell right here. Using the formula for modified internal rate of return is equal to the future value of the cash inflows divided by the present value of the outflows raised to the one nth power n is 4 in this case, so 1 divided by 4, close parentheses. I'm going to put another set of parentheses around this just to be sure. And then subtract the 1 to get the rate. And the modified internal rate of return is 0 0.09005, and that's my answer. And I have one capital budgeting criterion left, the payback period. I'm going to copy this information again and paste down here and work the payback period. Payback period is the simplest of these methods, if not the worst. Um, but all we do here is make a cumulative cash flow column. I don't need present values because the payback period ignores the rate. So all I'm going to do is accumulate these cash flows starting with negative 300,000 and then add the first year's cash flow. In this cell, I'm just going to say equals the previous negative 202,000 plus the next year's cash flow. And the rest of these are the same equation, so I'll just use the fill command. We find out that the payback period occurs between year three and four again. And I can solve for the payback period somewhere over here, which is equal to my last year with a negative cumulative cash flow, which is year three plus the fraction. 
I need 14,000 more out of that 82,000. So I need this to be a positive number. I'm going to say negative and click this cell and divide by the next year's cash flow. Close my parentheses. And this ends up being, and this is not dollars either, make this a general number, ends up being 3.1707 years. And those are all six methods demonstrated using Excel.